And the fact that Garrett Ganswine is the one who spoke up saying, oh, no, we're moving the names shows to me, it was kind of like the mask finally fell off. He's always been the sort of gentle nephew caretaker of Ratzinger. And then all of a sudden, we saw him kind of get get a little bit aggressive mm -hmm. and take over the life of Benedict the Sixteenth. That's kind of scary. It is. And it's the pressure too. the pressure coming mm -hmm. from. Is there pressure coming from behind the scenes? I would posit that that's a very high probability because of, you know, we've got cooperated evidence. We've got proof that of um, multiple conversations, all of that taking place. Is there pro uh, is there pressure coming from uh, from uh, the Holy See or individuals behind the Holy See? Maybe it's not Francis. Maybe it's Mar Diaga. Who knows who, who, who it is? But is that uh, machine pushing um, Ganstein saying, hey, uh, if you don't shut this down or make this seem like there is a back off. And that was the, the thing that really concerned me was that um, Sarah, even though he had the high ground, he had completely cooperated. He didn't need to say anything else, stepped back. And so now it, it's not like confirming the conversation, but the conversation is now on the process and not the content. And that is a win for those who are pushing the disinformation operations. Um, and they didn't have to tell a truth, right? They didn't have to, they lied. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, they, they've never been able, they were on the de defensive to, to cooperate their reporting and they couldn't do it. And for some reason, um, Sarah, uh, he, let the high, he let them have the high ground again of being able to push a narrative. Is Gorg, is Gerd Ganswein the most important person in the Vatican machine? I'm beginning to think that he is. What do you think? No. No. <laughs> I don't. I think that he um, has a, um, a, a role that is um, walking on the edge of the knife. Um, I think that he, in this point of time, has overplayed his hand, unfortunately, because um, he's going up against a cardinal as well, right? So yeah, he's the secretary for Pope Emeritus, but he's going up against a very well-respected, very truthful and a uh, cardinal who just cooperated his entire report. So uh, I don't think he really has that power. Um, and if he thinks he does, he's maybe mistaken on that because uh, I think he is seen as more someone who's going out the door. Um, I'm more concerned about the ones who are behind the scenes who don't speak up a lot. Carolyn, um, Meridiaga, um, the ones who don't speak up a lot but have a lot of power. Um, Schoenberg is another. Um, and, and who really are the ones who are influencing a lot. Uh, the German Cardinals right now, really concerned about that. Um, and it's, it's, it's not because of just the way, uh, the things that they're, uh, they're presenting to the church and especially in the German church, but the way, the politics behind it, the way that they're doing it, how they are actually ignoring directives that are coming from the Pope. Um, that, that to me was, that was a key point. Like this, we are literally seeing right now some rebellion coming from the German side, ignoring the Pope's directives on how synodology works. But it's not also, it's not very surprising on that uh, when you when you see that no one really actually, I interviewed Pope, um, not Pope, um, uh, Cardinal Burke a few, a few years ago on this, what is synodology? I don't know. Nobody knows. <laughs> so when you don't really have like that definition, what the Germans are doing is what they, they envision synodology is. And Francis is saying, oh no, time out. No, and there, there's not a lot of collaboration involved with that. So, yeah, I think that there are things, there are movers and shakers, politicking. The Germans were very much behind this Amazon Synod. Um, there's, so let me, there's, let me jump yeah. I want to jump back to this Ganswine thing because I, I think yeah, you're right. Sorry. What, you, what you just said is right about the Germans being so important. Now, if we look at the meta narrative, we have an ex-German pope. Right. His handler is an important German archbishop who is a Vatican insider, who's been a Vatican insider since the days of B-16 and is in charge of the papal household of Pope Francis. Yeah. So the whole access of power here is German. And this is why I think Ganswine is so key. It is because the biggest problem, the biggest pebble in Francis' shoe is that Benedict XVI is still alive. Still alive. It's a, yeah, it's a legacy that. that mars his legacy every single 
day. And he must somehow mute Benedict and make Benedict forgotten. And I think that that is the role of Gary Ganswine. And unfortunately, this whole thing, someone did, did, someone wasn't watching the correspondence of B-16 and something spilled out and we we saw kind of the mask fall off. We saw what Ganswine's role is in regard to B-16. I think this reveals the narrative of we have a German problem in the church. The Amazon Synod, by the way, I've said it before, was entirely German. Yeah, they bankrolled the whole thing, all the theology. Liberation theology, everybody thinks, is South American. It's German. <laughs> all of this is German. We have a German pope. We have a German handler. We have a German problem. We have an Argentinian trying to put the lid on all of this. And that's why I think Ganswine's really key. I don't think mm -hmm. we should write him off. I think he's, if he's not the most important linchpin in this, he's in the top five, I think, within the walls of the Vatican City. All right, you've read part of the manuscript. Have you read all of it? Where are you in it? No, I um, uh, I'm uh, about fifteen pages in. Okay, so, so I'm not. I mean, I'm, is there anything? Are, are they addressing? Did, does the word Amazonian synod you think appear in the book, or very probati, or any of these kind of controversial landmines covered in the text? Do you know yet? Um, I I haven't seen anything so far, but it, I'm you know I'm again like I'm reading that and five other things right now. So, um, but I will say um, it's the interesting um, part at the beginning in the introduction. They're addressing something that's even more critical to what's going on in the church today, which is modernism and relativism. Um, and so they 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 first talk about that, and then Sarah makes mention everything that we have to do in the way of action has to first come from contemplation. So he comes from his side of contemplation, which I concur with. Like it, mm -hmm. Mother Teresa of Calcutta said that when to her sisters, um, you know, if you read Mother Teresa of Calcutta, she said, "We are not um, social workers. We're to be contemplatives in the heart of the world. If you cannot, you know." Uh, treat your sister in the convent w uh, the same way that you would treat um, the, the the poor in the street, you're not going to be with us. <laughs> so there, there's that aspect of you have to come into the world looking for Christ, but you have to start from looking at him in the Eucharist. And I think that that, that was something that Sarah really puts forth um, in, in this document. So it's coming from a place of contemplation and looking moreover at the, at the beauty of the priesthood and why celibacy is important here, um, and what the tradition of the church is on that. And it's, so it's, it's superseding the Amazon Synod, and it's, it's overarching, you know, some of the very probati, um, concerns, but remember very probati has, and the push for married clergy, that's been going on for a long time. So this is centuries. not anything new. Yeah, <laughs> centuries. It's not anything new. Um, again, what I'd say is, um, and what I'm going to be doing in the next uh, few weeks as well, is to really look through that um, painful document, final document um, from the Amazon Synod and identify other pain point areas that aren't really being talked about right now because mm. I really think that that's where those are the things that are going to be approved.